God you're going to believe to follow. And that is when you step out in serving God. And, um, and that's a big part because that's what it's all about. It's not just about coming to church on a Sunday or a Wednesday night. It's not about just accepting Christ. It's about, okay, I've decided to accept Christ, but what do I do now? And um, so that, that's being a servant, you know, and figuring out what, what it is that God wants for us. So what a servant is, you know, if you look it up in the dictionary, it's just simply somebody that works for somebody else. You know, it just gives a domestic um, definition there. But if you were to translate that to a more biblical term of servant, it's to be enslaved. Um, you were a slave to somebody else, and when we accept Christ, then we become a slave to Christ. Um, I believe it's Romans, the first slide there. Romans 6.22 says, But now you are free from the power of sin, and you have become slaves of God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. So we're free from the sin. Now let's go ahead and start doing the things that lead us to holiness. And um, my scripture for tonight on this is uh, from 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7. It says, There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are a variety of ministries, but the same Lord. It says there are a variety of effects, but the same God who works in all things and all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So it doesn't say that just select people are going to have gifts. It doesn't say that um, we have a small percentage of people. It says that each and every one of us have something to offer. Each and every one of us have something it's going to manifest in our lives. It's going to do what? It's going to lead to the common good, which is the salvation of all mankind. For some of us, we know what those gifts are right off. You may have known for a long time what your gift was, and you, you jumped right in. You know, um, Maybe you're a, a musician, and that just became very easy to you. Maybe... Um, you're a public speaker and then public speaking becomes very easy to you. That's not something that comes natural to a lot of people. But, um, but those of you that don't know, you need to go ahead and figure out what that is. And you need to seek God to go ahead and find out what it is that God wants us to do. And that doesn't mean that you just focus on one thing because serving is beyond the walls of the church. It's what we do every single day when we go out and we live our lives, what we do at work, what we do when we meet people in the store. If we can go ahead and we can just realize that it's not an I thing, it's not what I can do, it's what God does, and it's all what we can do together, I think that's really important. So God wants people of action. And, um, you know, that means you're going out and you're serving. But in my experience, I've come up with a, a few things here that, for me, it's really, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's what I've experienced when I've gone out and I've made myself, you know, and decided to serve in a public way. And um, the first thing is sometimes God's going to ask us to do things that we don't understand. And um, because we may not see the big picture, you know, it, it may be something small, you know, like giving somebody money and you're like, man, why does that guy need my money? Uh, maybe feeding somebody. Uh, it may be something bigger like giving a car, you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, what it might be for each and every one of us. But, you know, I looked at the, the story of Noah and, and the reason why I, I picked Noah was because that's something that really did not make sense. You know, the guy lives, uh, you know, in a really horrible time frame. It says that he was one of the, the only righteous man left. And God comes to him and he tells him, hey, guess what? Um, I'm going to create a flood. I'm going to kill everybody else, but you're the last man standing. And Noah's, you know, I mean, can you imagine what he thought? You know, it's like, wow, I'm going to be, I was told I could bring my wife and my kids and their spouses, and everybody else on the earth is going to be gone. So he gets told what, how to build the ark. You know, it's a big, massive undertaking because of the size of the boat. And uh, he's hiring people, I'm sure. He has friends, he has families, and the whole while, you know, he knows that, man, I'm doing something, I'm creating something that I'm going to fill with 
none of these people, you know, and and that had to be hard. And and then when you look at when the rain's coming, and you know, uh, people might have been pounding on the doors, so hey, let us in, you know, we want to go with you because now we believe what you're doing. And, and he may have shared, I don't know, with what the whole plan was, but that couldn't have been easy, knowing that you know you're you're going to be the last guy on earth, and uh, and everybody around you is going to die. And and he, I'm sure that throughout this whole thing, he might have questioned God, like, man, is it like Abraham, where you know I'm going to do this, and then at the end of the day, it's going to be, well, I was just testing your faithfulness, you know, and God followed through with what He said He was going to do. Um, that's not easy, you know. I can't. Um, I don't know that I've had a situation quite that immense in my life, you know, that large, where I thought, I don't get where this is going. But I know there's a lot of times in my life where uh, I've started stuff, not knowing what the the big picture was going to be, not knowing where God was going to take me, and and after I completed that task and I started walking along that task. You know, God opened up those visions and he showed me where he took me along the way. And that's helped me get to where I am today. Um, for the, the next, next one I want to look at is, uh, it may mean doing things that we don't want to do. Uh, you may not want to deal with certain type of people. You may not want to go into certain types of places. Uh, I ride in a motorcycle ministry, and um, a lot of our our mission trips, if you want to call them that, our rides, are to bars, are to clubhouses, and uh, where the parties began, and there's drinking, and you know, it's like, I know as a Christian that, you know, I, I don't want to be in those places. That's my personal feeling, you know, it's like, because there's only so much stuff I can be around, you know, when the booze starts flowing and things start happening, you know, it's like, it makes you really uncomfortable. But I don't look at it like that. I look at it, where's God taking me? And, and there's a purpose behind it. But um, I just look for the winds. And when things start to get a little sideways, it's like, all right, it's time to go. And, and because you, because you get that feeling like, man, I'm, I'm just not going to minister to the people the way I want to minister to them. But, um, but I, look, I looked at Jonah. You know, he was the guy that did not want to do what God wanted him to do. And um, so much so that he went ahead and he said, well, um, tell, tells Jonah, I want you to go do, preach this proclamation in Nineveh. And no, Jonah goes, no, I think, uh, I think I'm going to go the other direction. And uh, he jumps on a boat and he head, heads toward Tarshish. You know, it's like, and so to get, get his attention, God says, uh, he starts this huge storm. And, and Jonah's response to the storm is, I think, um, I think I'm just going to go take a nap. You know? <laughs> if I was on a boat and some guy decided he was going to go take a nap during a big storm and we needed all the help we could get, I think I'd throw the guy overboard without him telling me he needed to. But, uh, but, but he goes ahead and he, he, he takes a, does that and then they come down and they tell him, hey man, you need to pray to your God, you know, um, this storm is out of control and we need to appease the gods to go ahead and, and save our lives. And they're getting ready to cast lots and, and Noah, at least he has integrity, right? He says, well, the reason the storm is here is because I'm here and I'm running from God. So uh, you want the storm to calm down, you know, you're going to have to throw me overboard. And so that's what they do. And then, uh, you know, he spends three days in the belly of the fish and he ends up on the beach. But, you know, here you have Noah, who, Jonah, who's being disobedient, you know, he's running from God, but it also says that those, that entire crew accepted God, you know, and they're like, hey man, let's go ahead and we're ready to offer up uh, sacrifices, we make vows to, to Jonah's God, you know, I'm thinking when I read, read this that if this guy had been willing, what could he have done, you know, if he had been a willing vessel, could, could he have saved more people along his path? And, uh, so he ends up on the beach and he has this come to Jesus moment inside the fish and he goes there and he, he gives the proclamation and uh, it says 120,000 people were saved. And I'm just like, man, you know, it's, and he goes and he sits on a hill and complains about 120,000 people coming to God. 
I have yet to meet a person in ministry that would complain about the salvation of 120,000 people. But, uh, you know, he was, you know, there's a lot you could pull out of that story, a lot of different ways you could look at it, but that's what I took it for, um, for tonight. And I just, you know, if we, if we're all willing vessels and we're willing to do the things that at certain times we may not want to do, you know, God can move in a huge way in our lives. And he, we can impact people beyond what we're ever going to know. And, um, you know, some of us plant seeds and others water them and others get to, get to bring it home. And you may not see the end result of, of your works and your actions, but, you know, if you believe that what you're doing is what God wants you to do, then you're, they're going to be there. And you don't need to worry about that. You just need to go ahead and take it for what it is and go, as long as I'm obedient with what God wants, that's really all that matters. And then the third point I want to share tonight is um, God's going to pull us out of our comfort zone. And, uh, and that's where, you know, it's, uh, you put yourself out there and you become very vulnerable. And, uh, and my comfort zone is is uh, not up here right now. You know, it's a, I know you guys think that I'm a great speaker and everything, but um, I've only done this a handful of times. And, and the first couple of times I was like, man, I'm ready to quit, you know, because I had all my notes, I had all my plans, and uh, went ahead and did it. And I had like a 40 minute window to, to teach in, and I was done in like 10 minutes. And I'm like, man. And and everybody comes up, they're like, oh, good job, you know, and they, 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 they're about as two-faced as they come because they told the pastor that I was horrible. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, man, you know, you learned that through the grapevine. I didn't even get to hear it from the pastor. But, so that really, that really stung, you know. So then, uh, you know, sometime later I get uh, pegged to do a Wednesday night. And it, it got better, you know. It didn't have nowhere to go but up, right? But, um, it was kind of the same result, and uh, you know, I really go, man, is this really what I should be doing, man? Do I belong up here uh, preaching the Word of God, you know? And I felt that that was that's something that God gave me, that that's something that I was going to do when I was a teenager. And here I am in my mid-30s, and I've done it four times. So, um, talk about perseverance, right? But... Um, you know, we could take our failures and, and we could take those times when we come out of our comfort zone and you lose the battle that day and you could, I could, could have quit and, and people might have cheered or no one would have blamed me. But, uh, you know, I want my, my struggles and my failures to grow me. And I want to go out and learn from them and I want to pick up the, my pants and big boy pants and I want to move on to the next step that God has for me because that's what it's about. You know, it's about not quitting, you know. If I got a thing from God, until God releases me from that, I got to stick with it. But, uh, you know, there's some hurts that go along with that. And, um, but I think that if you look at yourself, it's like, you know, a, a ball of clay, you know, and, and God continues to mold us. And, uh, and that's where our, our, the times that we struggle and the times that that hurt or the times that we don't understand things, you know, eventually there's a painting or a, a, something that comes out of that, which is who you are in your own circumstances. You know, and, and but there's a lot of amazing things that go along with serving. And it, you know, if it was life groups, life groups are great because you realize that you're not the only one that has struggles and you're not the only one that has trouble seeing things a certain way and you get to grow those things together. You know, we've led two of them and, and I'm looking forward to leading another one because I learn as much from the people in my life group as hopefully they learn from me and, and my wife. You know, there's nothing greater than doing ministry with your spouse, man. It's, it's the funnest thing because um, I don't know about everybody else's spouse, but, but my wife backs me up, you know, and um, when we're together doing it, it makes life a lot easier. But, um, you know, another thing, we can't, you can't compare yourself to another, um, anybody else's ministry, you know. Uh, sit up here and go, man, I don't preach like Pastor Scott, man. Maybe I'm never going to get there. Well, if I never try, then I never will, right? And, uh, you know, if we go ahead and um, 
we continue to push forward with what God has for us, then we're going to get there. Um, when you step into ministry that God puts you in, I don't think there's anything better because it's just there's a joy that comes with it. You know, when uh, when I get to go ride, those guys have become closer than my brothers. You know, I, I love the guys I ride with with all my heart. And the best part is I get to ride with my dad. So um, there's a special bond there because of that. And hopefully one day my son will, you know, I'm hoping he rides too. But um, you can't look at all the negative things that go along with ministry because if you look at the negative, then there's never going to be a positive. You've got to work past your vulnerabilities because when you step, when I'm stepping up here tonight, you know everybody out there is going to have an opinion, right? Good, bad. It's irrelevant because the only thing I'm going to think about when I leave here tonight is everything that I didn't say that I wanted to say, and I'm going to look at everything that the the did I really communicate what I wanted to communicate to everybody, and all I see is what I did wrong. Um, and that's a shame, you know, it, it shouldn't be that way, but that's how we as people look at it. So when you step out into ministry and you step out into what, what it is that God wants for you, you're going to have those same issues. You know, you're going to say, man, did I, if it was a life group or if you met somebody and um, you bring them in, and you may say the wrong thing and you're going to scare them away or you may say the right thing and you're going to bring them into the fold, shall we say. But, you know, it's a, a, my wife is down at Royal Family Kids Camp this week. My daughter's down there. And, uh, and I'm really excited to hear the stories that are going to come back because I know that's something that's been put on their hearts. And, and I know that that's an amazing opportunity for, for them. And um, I don't know if you guys have ever talked to the, a lot of them that have gone and, and for multiple years, but, you know, the impact that the one week has lasts a lifetime in that kid's life. And we need to take that same attitude and mentality to realize that the impact that we have with somebody 10 minutes on the street might impact that person for life. And that goes both ways, whether it's a positive encounter or a negative encounter. And um, if we're willing to set ourselves aside to go ahead and, and let God use us and we continue with that we attitude, that it's not about me, it's not about you, but it's about the kingdom of God, then it, that's what's going to accomplish everything. If you were to read further, I don't have the, the scripture in front of me, but um, in that 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, it talks about the hand and the foot. You know, it's about the body of Christ and how we all have our own part. So we can't go comparing ourselves to anybody else. Because every one of us serves in a different capacity, in a different way. We're all going to impact the same person in a different way. And if, if we can go ahead and, and continue to, to realize that, to understand that um, I can talk to the same person and I can achieve absolutely nothing. But maybe Don can talk to that guy and, and, and it, the impact that he has will just change that man's life forever. You know, and uh, I think we as Christians, you know, we, we can't be so critical of ourselves. And we can't be critical of other Christians because we don't know what their story is and what their path is. We need to be concerned with our path that God has given us. So, um, hopefully, uh, you guys leave here tonight and you think about our, yourself. You know, are you impacting people the way that God wants you to impact? Are you um, being moldable, learnable, and teachable for what God wants of us? You know, and, and just becoming the, the full body of Christ and for what he has for us. So um, we'll go ahead and, and close in prayer. Father, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we lift up all those family, all the kids and the leaders and, and everybody at RFK, Lord, that you just go ahead and continue to do your work in them. Uh, we th that you just continue to impact the lives of all those kids there this week, Lord. And we know that you're going to impact the lives of the leaders and the students as well, Father. And Father, we just, 
as we leave here today, I just ask that, you know, we all of us just take a look at ourselves. Are we going down the road that you have for us? Are we impacting the world the way that we should? And as we examine our lives and ourselves, Lord, is there, what are we doing that we can do more? What are we doing that we can do a better, Lord? And I just thank you for tonight. In your name we pray. Amen.